Hello, I'm Stephen Gunn with Lasting Legacies, my co-host, Evan Herman, coming to you from the studio at KGEB here in Tulsa. So thankful to get to do this for the YBT group. And thank you for YBT being such a crucial part of helping launch this podcast and this avenue for learning more about ways to really truly leave a legacy. What does a legacy look like? What does that mean? We're here today with our, our guest, Mr. Clifton Talbert. Thank you for joining us, sir. No, thank you. So glad to have you. And if anybody knows about legacies and what it means to, to change a legacy, to leave a legacy, and, and to make a, a difference, Clifton definitely is that, uh, that person. And uh, I really appreciate the time together today. So. Yeah, fine. I'm delighted to be here. <laughs> well, tell us just a little bit about. I know I know a little bit from your books, but tell us a little bit about kind of your just your background. I mean, you you have a lot kind of to talk through. But yeah, you know, it's. Uh, I guess I could probably succinctly say, I grew up dreaming in the Mississippi Delta. Yes. Wasn't quite sure what my future would look like, but I dreamed of something that I couldn't put my hands on. It was a, it was a part of a great gift of inquisitiveness. Yeah. that allowed me to think about a world beyond the fields of the Mississippi Delta. That's where I grew up. But it was in that world that I encountered community, incredible people wow. who had very little themselves, but they gave me their hearts. And when you're given the heart of someone, it can really transform your life. And uh, it has certainly done that for me. And no matter what I do or where I travel, I always remember the journey that got me there. Caring people and inquisitive mind, the combination of those two just really kicked it over the field. Wow. Wow. I remember uh, in one of your books you talk about, I think, the, the porch people. Yes. So what, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean? Well, you know, that's, that's the caring people. Uh, and, and I think in all of our lives, we, we should strive to have those type of people. Today, we probably uh, look at it more formally from a mentoring perspective. Uh -huh. But I call the porch people my mentors without a title. Uh, because what they brought to the table was unselfishness. Yeah. And if unselfishness is the driver, it really allows you to accomplish more than you thought you could. Mm -hmm. And it allows their conversations to take root in places that you wouldn't think the soil was even there. Mm -hmm. But that's the power of unselfishness. And my porch people were those people, and, and I were for all practical purposes, uh, my mentors looking out for my future. Wow. You know, you're, you're an author, you're a speaker, you have multiple businesses. Uh, share with us a little bit about your business journey and just some of the different stuff that you've had along the way. The business journey is, um, is interesting because it's a <laughs> journey that I didn't think could actually happen, but yeah. it did. But I've come to understand over the years that the seeds for those business journeys, that, that business journey, those seeds were always there. And I call it, uh, there are seven steps to the end of that journey, to that uh, success model, that's what we want to call it. And the gift of inquisitiveness is where it all starts. And, and that's a gift that every human being has been given. And when that gift is allowed to flourish, then you walk up those stairs from inquisitiveness to imagination, to discovery, to the epiphany that tells you, wow, I got something. And then you begin to move into that business world of actually research, prototype, design, et cetera. And, and, and that's the path that I followed and perhaps the path that everyone follows. Uh, so I didn't know that I would end up as a business owner, but those seeds had been planted early on in the Mississippi Delta through my uncle who owned the ice house in Glen Allen. Wow. I worked for him and he owned his own business in a world where being a, um, I guess related to the cotton industry, owning your own business was sort of outside of the ballpark. Right. And, and that's what he did. And, and I was fortunate enough to be able to work with him and work for him. And, and it was that process that really set me on the journey of discovering what I could do, even though circumstances may have said differently. Right. But the right mindset can really set you on a course towards success. That's wonderful. Wow. Now, I think you talked a little more about that in one of your books. So it was called uh, Who Owns the Ice House? Who Owns the Ice House. Is that right? right? Yeah, that's a Kaufman-sponsored book uh, that uh, has basically been translated into multiple languages hmm. and is used all over the world. And, and it speaks, I think, more than to what I would call the organizing steps of owning a business. Yeah. It speaks more to how to get your life transformed in such a way that when that opportunity does show up, you can grab it without mm. hesitation. Mm. Uh, and that's what I, that's the story of Uncle Cleve, that's the story of the Ice House. Because it was an opportunity for him and he grabbed it and it changed my life. And now, some 50 years later, it's changed the lives of men and women around the world. That reminds me of, of the saying, the, the best definition of luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Yeah, that, that's, uh, 
you know, and, and you can be prepared. But the thing that I always tell young people is don't get so caught up in the future you haven't seen mm. that you don't take advantage of the day that's before you. Yeah. And this is what, for me, preparation is, is, is really embracing the opportunity that's there, being your best wherever you are. Uh, if you can't win wherever you are, it's going to be very difficult to take a nasty attitude somewhere else and win. <laughs> right. So you you, you got to be able yeah. to win where you are. And, and I think that's what preparation is all about. This program is made possible by the generous support of OklahomaBanner.com. Oklahoma Banner is a locally owned company providing custom designed full color banners shipped directly to you. They offer a wide variety of banner products. Visit OklahomaBanner.com today. It's been said that life is about capturing moments. So I encourage you to capture this moment right here and take a picture of my contact information to reach out to me later. It is most important when you find a real estate agent to find one with the ability to communicate with all involved, knowledgeable about the real estate market, and one's ability to negotiate contracts. If you're thinking about buying or selling a home within the next year, reach out to me. I'd love to see how I can help you reach your goals. Thank you so much. Now, you've had a number of, and you've spoken to, obviously, in some of your books, but you've had a number of challenges. Would you say there was one challenge, ob obstacle, situation, scenario that was maybe kind of like at the top of the list there, and how did you overcome that? I would say the biggest challenge that I had was the challenge of an interior desire to be successful and an exterior world that said that's impossible. Mm. That this is who you are and this is where you'll always be. Wow. You are an African American in the Mississippi Delta doing legal segregation. Even though in my head there were pictures, I mean incredible pictures, wow. that did not seem possible. And it really came to bear to me when I had the opportunity to speak at the United Nations uh, at an innovation conference. I mean, this is an innovation conference, huh. mind you, not picking cotton. Yeah. You know, and they had men and women there from throughout our country and around the world. And I realized that even though I had dreamed of that some 50 years ago, that the process to get there was taking place all along those lines, hmm. all along the time. And, and, and that obstacle of dreaming and not being able to see right up close that you had all the tools necessary, mm -hmm. for many people that can cause you to quit. That yeah. can cause you to give up. But very few people are born with all the tools in their hands to accomplish what they need yeah. to accomplish. You right. may have one or two, you may only have one, but it is the using that one talent to its best that gives you the opportunity and the right to maybe get a hold of five additional ones. That's right. Yeah. Wow. So let me ask you, like, in business, there are so many many, many, many definitions of success and how you would measure success. And, you know, coming from an individual who's had many businesses, who has a lot of success, what would you say success is? I mean, obviously you can't put that on each person, but for you, what is success and how do you measure it? Well, success for me is, is, is rather different than it is for most people because I, I don't put a cost factor to success. Right. I don't put the gain of stuff to success, even though those, those things are important to live in the world in which we do. But I remember clearly when I left home at 17, uh, my great aunt who had raised me, we drove up to Greenville. Someone drove us because she couldn't drive. <laughs> and someone drove us to Greenville, Mississippi to the train station. And, and I was scared. The Illinois Central was there. And, uh, and she hugged me, but this is what she said. She said, whatever you do, don't make us ashamed. Mm. And I never forgot that. Mm. And I remembered from that point on that success had little to do with me as much as it had to do with how could I live my life and lead my life in such a way that it would bear positive record on those who had taken care of me. Wow. And for me, that's success. Wow. And that goes right into this whole show of living a lasting legacy. And I mean, that's just, that is the epitome of, of of the show. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, I think that uh, Clifton, you have, um, in so many ways. I mean, you've, uh, I mean, you, you've been, you've spoken before kings and leaders and right. you know, around places. I mean, what what would you say that you have seen legacy looks like around the world? Like what, you know, different places you've been. Does that does it look different in different places? Have you seen different ways of how? I, I would say the term legacy. Um, 
probably means different things to different people. Yeah. But reality is that once we start making footprints through life, uh, someone will be watching our footprints. Yeah. Right. And when we are no longer here, we will be remembered for where our footprints took us. Right. Our presence will make a difference or our presence will not have made a difference because of choices that we may have made. Yeah. So I would say that for me, what I have seen for many people, just the recognition that their life matters beyond their day. Mm. And, and when you look at it from that perspective, it, it's like you, you want to leave a conversation that other people can continue to have. Because even though my porch people, as we talked about earlier, they're no longer here. Right. But their conversation rings in my head. I yeah. mean, those conversations are there. The acts of their lives are there. Their unselfishness is still there. Right. When I get tired and don't want to go any further, I remember those people who just absolutely didn't know what the word quit looked like. I mean, they just kept going. So they probably never used the word legacy, huh. but their life was left in a way that it became a legacy that would continue to fuel me today. Uh, once you get to a certain age in life, you realize that uh, life does not continue. And uh, there are times that you want to leave something of yourself, the best of who you are for others to grab a hold of. And I think that most people tend to feel that. If you are driven by unselfishness, then I think you're going to feel it perhaps more strongly Perfect. that I have a purpose on this planet and I need to make sure that that purpose is wisely used and brought yeah. about. Do you suffer with migraines, seizures, neuropathy, dementia, or movement disorders? Discover an independent concierge neurology practice with treatment from a Christian perspective by Dr. George Gonzalez. Hi, my name is Matt Moore, president of the Young Businessmen of Tulsa. I pray that this program is a blessing to you and that it inspires you to grow in both your business and personal life. Did you know that many people, both young and old, hold a mentality that their success is all about them? When in reality, we know that our success is dependent on how well we can serve and meet the needs of others. Owning a business is a huge responsibility, and success is very important for not only you, but also your employees and your community. If our community is going to continue to thrive, we need to be proactive in promoting a business community that's focused on being excellent stewards in all areas of life, so we can create lasting legacies. Today, we have a fantastic opportunity in front of us that could really take our city and community to the next level. Each program we air has the potential to reach over one million households. But in order to do this, we need to reach an extra $1,600 in monthly reoccurring giving. YBT is looking for two types of partners, those who can pledge $9 a month and those who can pledge $19 a month. Not only will we continue to share our Christ-centered message, but in order to keep with the spirit of YBT, a portion of each monthly pledge that you give will benefit our monthly Pay It Forward projects in order to help give back to our city. If you decide to pledge $19 a month, we will have your name scroll at the bottom of the screen on each program as a proud supporter. Every pledge is a tax-deductible donation. Will you help me make a bigger difference in our city? YBT has a track record of creating better leaders, and we have raised well over $145,000 for community projects since our conception. Join us as a co-producer as we take this message and program across the airwaves. Help us steward a message that will literally change people's lives forever. To make your pledge, please visit www.patreon.com forward slash YBT. As we're talking here, typically we ask our, our guests to you know, give us one or two points that really shifted your business or helped focus it that are nuggets for other people. And as we're talking, um, and as we've talked before in years past, you know, one of the things I've just noticed from you, and it doesn't matter what business it's in, it's just a life principle that I've learned from you, is that it regardless of your circumstance, regardless of your financial position, regardless of where you're at in life, you get to choose your attitude and your attitude will determine your aptitude basically. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a good assessment. Uh, there are some choices that we can make 
And, but again, I also believe in community. I believe in relationships. I believe in people caring about each other. Yeah. Because just those, those times that we talked, uh, you get a different conversation when you're not talking to yourself. Right. So you need to have other people around you. And, and other people need to realize that uh, even Cicero said it thousands of years ago, that people were born to unite in community. Mm -hmm. And that hasn't changed. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's one of our best places to be. And, and, and I think that when other people can help you to realize that uh, your attitude is important and, and they can give you examples of when their attitude changed. Right. And, and you began to see, you know, because, yeah, I, I can control this. Mm -hmm. I may not get it all done like in a snap of a finger because nothing is very quick. It's not like a microwave society mm -hmm. that we live in. It's a process, an ongoing process. But change is definitely possible and transformation is definitely possible. And when you get the right attitude and realize that you can step beyond where you are and that no matter what the circumstances are that may be foreboding, that may be daunting, whatever those words we might want to use to say bad, uh, we can move forward because our attitude tells us that we can. Absolutely. What, um, you know, we, we've had the privilege, or I've had the privilege of coming to your office and learning from you a couple times over, over the years. And for someone who you know, hasn't had that opportunity, um, what would be one, you know, I'm starting a business out and I'm just not sure about self-confidence or direction or how to communicate with people. Just what would be one piece of general advice that, that you would give to someone who's just starting out and starting their own business? I would say the first thing that I would say if a person is just starting out, and, and we have to define starting right. out because that means different things to different people. Because every business starts not with a legal entity, uh -huh. nor does it start with a prototype, nor does it start with the epiphany or the wow factor. It starts with an inquisitive mind. Uh -huh. Can I do this? Does this make sense? At that point in time, as you begin to deal with those questions going around in your head, and they are there for all of us, that's how it all starts. I think that's the time to start looking for someone, start looking for that person who may be able to help you take this plethora of questions and start to distill them down to one or two, yes. to one or three questions. Then those questions now become your imagination. Uh -huh. You begin to put feet to it, hands to it, or head to it. You begin to see something, right. begin to right. shape up. And along the way, you have these mentors or this one person that you can trust, this one friend. It could be a roommate. It could be an uncle. Mm -hmm. It could be an aunt. Or it could be your boss. It could be anyone that cares enough about you to sit with you and help you understand that this is the journey of humankind. Right. That we ask questions. And when there's someone there to help us to sort of formulate those questions into a meaningful conversation, then that, to me, sets us up for what the possibilities really are. Yeah. You brought some books um, that, that you've written. And I, I would love for you to kind of just show a couple of them. Yeah. Well, this particular book here, uh, Shift Your Thinking, Win Where You Stand, mm -hmm. uh, to me, it's, it's sort of like that question you just asked. It, it, it's about positioning yourself to realize that you can do it. Yeah. And the chapter that I really love in this book, I think I wrote this book just to write this one chapter. <laughs> you know, and I just couldn't write one chapter, so I had to write more, so right. I put six around it. But what I really wanted to say is that swimming upstream will happen in your life. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to understand, don't get scared when all of a sudden you have to pivot and go the other way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes going the other way upstream takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of focus. But upstream, human beings were not designed to go upstream emotionally, psychologically, real. Salmon were designed to go upstream. Right. They swim upstream. But human beings can do it. But we have to use more muscles to do it. We have to use more focus to do it. And the other thing to realize, there's not a lot of people want to go along with you when you're going upstream. That's yeah. true. Because it takes a lot of effort yeah. there. But it is in that moment of going upstream that you begin to, during that focusing process, begin to understand what you can do. You begin to see things from a different perspective. You will eventually go downstream again. But you'll go downstream with a great deal of knowledge more than you had before, a, a sense of self-assuredness. I can do this. Yeah. 
you're not just waiting on the good time because you know good times give away to bad times. Yeah. And bad times shows up in everybody's life. Mm -hmm. But when they do, you have your own memory. When I was going upstream, I learned how to go downstream with meaning and purpose. Mm -hmm. And that makes all the difference in the world. Wow. So shift your thinking is really about, goes back to your word of attitude. Yeah. If you can shift your thinking and win mm -hmm. where you are, and deal with things as they are, and with community there, because that's why I brought Eight Habits of the Heart, mm -hmm. because from my perspective, I never leave this book alone. Huh. Because if you do not create a group of men and women around you that can help support you, and that you can help support, and where unselfishness drives the day, that's gonna be the winning factor. So I put these two things together. That's great. You know, yeah. you build yeah. community, you build relationships, and once those relationships are there, then you look at, okay, I got to win this. So what is Clifton telling me? So it kind of goes through a little bit of what I did. This program is made possible by the generous support of The Demand Project, a nonprofit organization fighting to eradicate sex trafficking and the sexual exploitation of children. To find out how you can help, please visit thedemandproject.org today. Could your business or organization benefit from TV advertising? KGEB Tulsa TV 53 broadcasts from the campus of Oral Roberts University and reaches the greater Tulsa metro 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Contact us for more info at 918-488-5300 or visit kgebamerica.com slash sales. One of the things, I, when I think of recently, just because of the interaction recently, is, is a legacy that you're able to leave. I think this kind of speaks to that, like the mindset is leaves a legacy. But one of the things that we we do here, which we're enjoying right now, is some of one of the business ventures you delved into, uh, Roots Java Coffee, and which I happen to have you know, a bag right here. I'm going to take a sip of your coffee because I'm. Yeah, you're just, you didn't bring me one. Uh, so I didn't bring one. Um, but tell me a little bit about how that has, because I know what, what struck me about this in the context, and I'm just trying to do a plug, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about specifically the way in which you know from the fields and the farmers there all the way to this cup, that whole process and the impact and legacy it has on the, the farmers and those who are actually bringing the, the, the beans to, to market. So, Well, most businesses have a backstory. Yeah. And most businesses have a future story. And when you know those stories, it really gives you a greater sense of purpose in what you do. Uh, we import our beans from Rwanda. And, and Rwanda, as you know, was almost wiped off the face of the earth right. during that horrific genocide. Yeah. There were survivors. And they had with them an entrepreneurial spirit that was pent up. But once they took the top off of that and realized that this is our country, mm -hmm. we have great soil, ideal climates, volcanic soils, we got everything that is needed to have some of the best coffee in the world. Huh. So all of a sudden they began to get their life back. And as a result of that, their coffee is now becoming specialty beans that people that are sought all over the country. And we're very fortunate to be part of an international supply chain that provides us yeah. these incredible beans. But more importantly, after I always say, is that through our company and through others, Rwandans are smiling again. Yeah. Uh, and, and because they now awesome. are taking control yeah. in charge of their own lives. And that's what entrepreneurialism yeah. is about. That's what innovation right. is about. It's not just about making a dollar. It's about transforming lives as well in that gaining process. Yeah. You want to gain much more, and we right. can. Yeah, I think that's, that's the thing that I love about not just the model of good coffee, but good coffee that really has breathed life yeah. into that community yeah. in that area. And that's... I. I think that is that is a legacy in and of itself, let alone what those people now can bring and, and, and contribute to their community and their society. All right. It, you know, be, as we're winding this down, um, you know, I know you and I have both had, again, I feel like it's an opportunity and it's a luxury to have had one-on-ones with you independently. Yeah. And, like, just so everyone realizes, like, this is a guy's life that if you could ever model, like, the, you're, you're <laughs> sincerely it because... I mean, while you may not be as known as Steve Jobs or, you know, all these innovators, like, you are so personable, and you care so much about individuals. Like, you make a difference 
every single where you're at that is more meaningful than the newest iPhone. It literally changes the heart, the spirit, and the mind of people. And when I think of you, I think of like, that's, that's what I want for my life when I die. Like, I want people's lives to be changed in their heart, their spirit, yeah. and their mind. And that goes on to like kind of our last question. I'll yeah. let you ask it. Well, just one of the things, I mean, obviously, <laughs> crucial thing we all know is that what the Lord says about us is the most important, right? Yeah. But short of that, <laughs> what would you say that you want to be said of your legacy of, of Clifton Talbert? You know, I think about it periodically, and uh, but more than think about it, I do it. My son called me a couple years ago. He's a young entrepreneur in LA. He said, Dad, am I going to have an inheritance? I said, what are you talking about? Do you know something I don't know? <laughs> I mean, that just came right out of the blue. Yeah. He said, well, you and mom give away everything. I said, son, if I've taught you and you've witnessed unselfishness, yeah. then I have given you the best gift that I can give you. The world thrives and lives on unselfishness. Mm. And when we choose to be selfish, we take our gifts out of the marketplace of life. Hmm. But when we choose to be unselfish, our gifts are there, intermingled with others, creating an incredible place in which to call home. I would simply want to be remembered as an unselfish person. Wow. Love it. Well, thank you again for joining us. This yeah. has been a fantastic discussion. Thanks for coming and spending time with us today. Uh, this has been so meaningful, and uh, we hope that you're able to take away some amazing nuggets that, that we have. I've, I'm going to be chewing this for, for days, and uh, yeah. hope you're having a good time. Tune in next time as we have more of our lasting legacies, and have a great day. Take care. Are you looking to feel and look your best? Every Suit I Wear is brought to you by Suit Connection, and right now they have a three-suit special for $299.99 with three free ties. Search for them on Facebook, Suit Connection Tulsa, or stop by at 61st and Sheridan. Are you looking for a different kind of fellowship? Come join us for our monthly luncheons on the second Monday of every month. Our luncheon is open to anyone, and we meet at Tiamo's, which is located in Tulsa at 61st and Sheridan. Every month, we host a speaker who is either a local business tycoon or successful leader. To be notified of future events, please text the word YBT411 to 99000 or visit us at www.ybtok.com.